Now, President Ekufuado has justified the appointment of 110 ministers and deputies to his government, insisting the large number is needed to address the numerous challenges inherited from the John Mahama administration. The size of the government has attracted widespread criticism, even from persons known to be sympathetic to the new patriotic party. And despite the reasons cited and the justifications, the issue is refusing to go away. Think Tank, CDD Ghana, one of the many organizations opposed to large government size, is urging the president to trim down his team as they're too many for a developing country such as Ghana. In an exclusive interview with the Daily Graphic and GTV, however, President Ekufuado says he's confident a successful uh, delivery on his campaign promises will prove the critics wrong. I believe that any government in the Fourth Republic has inherited the challenges that my government is inheriting. We're talking about a country with a 74% GDP to debt ratio, 2.4 billion debt overhang in the energy sector, persistent decline in industrial and agricultural output production, the slowest rate of growth of, over the last 20 years, 3.6% rate of growth, widespread unemployment, major issues of corruption, and the leakage, persistent leakage of revenues from our system. This is the background to my coming into office. And it is the reason also why I'm in office, because these were the circumstances facing the people of Ghana that persuaded them that they needed a new change in direction and a new change in national leadership. Further, in order to address these challenges, I believe I have put before the people of Ghana, I did so in the election, and I've certainly done so in my State of the Nation address, as well as in the budget that the Finance Minister of Reacha put before the Parliament of Ghana, by the way, a budget that has now been passed. We put together, we put before the Ghanaian people the most ambitious program of social and economic transformation, I believe, in the, in the history of the Fourth Republic, with all sorts of new and dedicated initiatives. Again, the parliamentary majority that the MPP has has brought a whole host of really excellent material <coughs> into the public space of our country. When you put all of these circumstances together, my assessment was that we needed to really put all hands on deck. I needed the cooperation of the material in my party, in the country, that would allow me to deal with these issues. And already I think that the signs are there that this government, despite the inheritance, behind, despite these huge challenges that are facing us, has began to put its hand and began to try to put some order into the circumstances of our country. Largely, we saw that in the budget. We've seen a budget that is making a very determined effort to solve some of the structural problems of our economy. Already, we're talking about moving from what? A deficit of some 9% to 6.5%. We're talking about moving the rate of growth of our economy from 3.6% to 6.5%. We're seeing the initiatives that are going to free the private sector and stimulate the private sector to begin to produce again in Ghana. The era of high taxes, excessive taxation, to feed the apparently insatiable appetite of the central government is over. We've now seen the, uh, 
a, a fiscal and economic stance that is about growing the economy of our country. I believe that with this, this is the background that got me to make these decisions. I'm aware that people are concerned about what they see as maybe the cost of this large government. But there's one or two things that I can say. The number of, for instance, amongst the deputy ministers, 42 out of the 50 are all parliamentarians. And in effect, converting them from parliamentarians into ministers, the, the marginal cost of that transformation is minimal in terms of its impact on the public exchequer. So, and overall, I believe of the 110 ministers of my government, some 65 to 70 percent are all from parliament. So the burden on the public exchequer, which is a matter that is agitating some minds, may not necessarily be as anywhere as acute as people think. When they think, oh, ministers, so already you, you have a certain image. But in fact, the ministers we're talking about are largely parliamentary. Yes, Let me just finish. Sorry. Let me just finish. And then on top of it, at the end of the day, if our strategy for economic growth succeeds, and in a year, two years, three years down the road, we are seeing the expansion and the growth of the Ghanaian economy, more jobs are coming onto the market and being taken up by our young people. Our agriculture has begun to boom. We have taken already some important initiatives in that area. There's a stimulus package that we, we put in to, on, on the road towards reviving our industrial uh, uh, sector. If these measures succeed, in accelerating the rate of growth of our economy and creating greater prosperity, I believe that what you call the brouhaha would turn out to be exactly that, a brouhaha. So that's uh, President uh, Akufuado there speaking to GTV and the Daily Graphic newspaper. Well, there's uncertainty over whether Parliament will be able to approve all of the president's ministerial nominees before deputy ministerial nominees that is before the house rises at the end of the month the vetting of the 54 nominees is expected to commence next friday which is just six days before the house rises on march 31st minority leader harry nidrusa says the committee will do the best but cannot guarantee it will be able to vet all of them before the house rises we may take them in terms of eight or ten a day, probably eight a day, uh, given how adequately the committee will deal with eight or ten nominees a day, and probably dedicate a day for the four ministers of state who will just appear, and then we will get to. Mr. Speaker, we may not be able to exhaust the 54, but eight a day, let's try. Uh, we are human as much as we can facilitate the formation of a government, indeed the largest size of government ever under the Fourth Republic, as the Honorable Okuje too have uh, said. Now we have been told that we never campaign on a lean size government. I didn't know that competence is measured in size. Until this new theory, I didn't know that now you can measure competence in size. But we are committed, we are committed to doing our work <laughs> As, as, as an appointments committee, and trust that, Mr. Speaker, eight, ten a day, if within four or five days we can clear all of them, we will. But if there are difficulties, we will do our utmost best to clear as many as possible so that Parliament can approve them before we rise. Our intention will be to work towards all of it. But if we are constrained because of the budget considerations, whatever we will do to assist the President to form his government, we will assist them so that we can hold them accountable and responsible to their actions and these are the ministry. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. The exigencies of the time sometimes decide, dictate what results that must be taken. Mr. Speaker, you recollect that in the in the in the um, appointment of 
the former vice president when, unfortunately, this country suffered the transition of um, the then president, President Mills. And when we had to approve of um, a vice president, it was done in just one day. But within, within 12 hours, parliament approved of the vice president, given the exigencies of the time. And I'm praying that the exigencies of the time would dictate what, what resort that might be applied. That is not to compel the, the committee to resort to any prescribed means. They meet to decide what to do. Well, uh, NDC MP for North Tongue and member of the Appointments Committee, Samuel Okujita Blakwa, is concerned the committee will not have enough time to do a thorough job. You can only start vetting by Friday uh, next week. Uh, that leaves you only six days to do vetting before the 30th. And there are 54 and people, and, and are, usually you vet like a maximum of four a day. Yes, we, we have been vetting a maximum of four, uh, but it looks like because of the historic numbers, we have to um, uh, be vetting about more than 10 people a day. Um, and so even parliament is, is constrained. Look at, how, look at what we have had to go through and what we are going through because of the historic numbers. And so when civil society and members of the general public are raising issues to do with the numbers. It is not, it's not only the impact on the economy. It's not only the impact on the national purse. It's not only the role conflict, the duplication and all of that, and, and, and how this can retard the development of our country. But even look at how parliament is now constrained. We are now struggling to fit these huge numbers in our schedule. So and I, I don't see how, how we are going to be able to vet all these 54 people. I mean, if we have to do a thorough work, if we have to uh, assure the public who elected us and brought us here that But another member of the committee and MPP MP for Laura, Anthony Cabo, disagrees the committee will do a bad job because of the limited time. Listen. The president indeed indicated that he was in, in, in a hurry to get his government ready and appealed to parliament to support him so we can form the government. I have heard the minority leader of the House indicate that they are very much prepared to cooperate with the government so that the government can be in place and therefore hold us accountable for the mandate that the Ghanaian people have given to us. So uh, I think that all arms of government will have to expedite action. Parliament, yes, will be rising on the 30th of, um, of, of, of this month. And it means that there is going to be some extra work and extra time we have to put in. Don't forget, we are here not by ourselves. We are here because we are here to represent the people. And the people want this government to succeed. That is why they gave the government this, this mandate, an overwhelming mandate, a goodwill. And so we are prepared as members of parliament and, of course, members of the appointments committee to assist His Excellency the President and to ensure that um, his uh, agenda to set up a government, hopefully by the close of this month, comes to fruition. In our parliament on Friday could not approve the 10 deputy regional ministers who were vetted this week. Members of the Appointments Committee, a member of the Appointments Committee, Joseph Yilechire, says time and human resource constraints made it difficult for the committee to finish its work on time. Many of the times, we want Ghanaians to know who is this person. And the purpose for the vetting is to find out, is he capacity, has he got the capacity to work? I mean, they are deputies. People are saying, why are we spending so much time on them? It's because they can become ministers in a short time. So we look for that. But in this particular case, there are no issues at all. Yeah. Um, how come today was on the other paper that the, the, the report that. of the, the committee that, see, on, on the 10 deputy I mean, ministers if you, look at it, if you see the workload <laughs> and the capacity of parliament, that's why we're saying parliament needs more capacity building. I mean, many people have just been appointed to take over. The committees have been changed. And so that will require some uh, time for them to also pick up. Uh, so I believe that is an is a issue of getting the reports written. Uh, and of course, after the vetting, you know, the reports are thoroughly examined by our leaders to agree what should be included about what report. So I think that is just an issue. It's but, not a, but there are no issues with it. No, 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 no. 
You're watching Joy News Prime. Still to come in the bulletin, new commemorative five Ghana City notes gets cold reception in Kumasi. Details when we return. Welcome back. Now, in a rare move, members of the Kumasi Metropolitan Assembly on Friday unanimously endorsed Osei Asibe Entry as the new mayor of Kumasi. He holds an MBA in marketing and is a former assistant inspector of taxes at the Internal Revenue Service and a former deputy regional minister. He garnered 132 of the 133 votes cast, representing 99.2%. The rejection of one vote prevented the president's nominee from attaining a 100% endorsement. Confirmation of previous mayors have gone several rounds amidst intense lobbying. Mr. Ose Isibe, in his acceptance speech, pledged to restore the local economy and Kumasi's image as the once garden city of West Africa. This is not the Kumasi that we want, but we want the Kumasi that the dignity of our women will be respected. Respecting from a session address, you know, a divine governance, diplomacy, and peace building. And there, I will touch on it. Diplomacy and peace building. And near you, Papa, the welfare of the Honorable Assemblymen will also be touched. If the structures are working, my work is going to be very easy. Security and human safety, I will touch on it. Sanitation and waste management, I am going to touch on it. Facilitation of enabling business environment, I am going to touch on it. But I am mindful, say your man penny, I can say and check your better and swabber. If it's a president, you see, he is in hurry here. And if the president says he is in a hurry, then we have to double our efforts. Assembly members should be in a hurry to take development to their areas. Well, some assembly members have been pledging their support for the new mayor of Kumasi. Of course, they weren't. And that's exactly what every uh, mayor or MC should do. We have systems and structures in the assembly. And anyone who goes contrary to that is on the verge of failing. And um, I was very happy when he was uh, talking about making all the structures or seeing to it that due process is uh, recognized. So I think what he's about to do, if indeed he's bent on doing that, I think he wouldn't have any problem with the assembly members and Kumasi at large. As an assembly member. We have new assembly, I can say, because we have new set of uh, distinct government appointees. So uh, with the new set of government appointees, we are able to elect the presiding member once and for all. And subsequently, there's nothing to be left on turn. Today's endorsement, as you can see, each and every member of this house is very excited and very, very happy with the way things have gone. Uh, you know that uh, we have been left out uh, since when we assume office. Other districts have their presiding members and they are going on with the, their business. It's perfect and it's marvelous. Everything is superb. You know, because the way we were just able to vote for the, 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 the MC, because everything was perfect. And now we are prepared to work with the new chief executive. The reason why I'm saying that is. Uh, all that long, we have lost about two years at the assembly, and we have only four-year mandate. And so long as we have lost two good years, it means that we, we, we have delayed, and for that matter, our electors are going to uh, lose, pop, lose interest or popularity in us. Meanwhile, members of the Tamale Metropolitan Assembly, on the other hand, have unanimously endorsed the president's choice for mayor, Ibrahim uh, Idris Musa also known as Musa Superior, secured all 57 votes cast. He lauded the assembly members for not allowing chieftaincy, religion and politics to impede development in the metropolis. Mr. Musa pro promised to serve and be a servant to the people.
Although the assembly has 61 members, including the elected mayor, the two MPs in the area, Harina Idrisu of Tamale South and lawyer Inu Safuseni of Tamale Central, do not have voting rights. One other member is deceased. Now, private legal practitioner Martin Pebu is confident the setting up of a domestic violence fund will encourage victims to report to the police. An Accra High Court on Friday ordered government to, as a matter of urgency, set up a domestic violence support fund to provide free medical care for domestic violence victims. Lawyer Pebu filed the suit arguing that uh, a decade after the enactment of the Domestic Violence Act, government was yet to comply with a provision that makes this imperative. The AG's department, however, did not enter an appearance, leaving Justice Anthony Yabua to direct that the six-month limit takes effect upon service and initiation process by the AG. Lawyer Pebu spoke to Joy News. He believes this is a good step in the fight to end domestic violence. It is the case that poverty is real in Ghana today. Okay? Uh, there are over 200,000 families, okay, or persons, 200,000 persons on LEAP. That's a livelihood empowerment program, right? Yes, so these are very poor persons. So it occurred to me that, okay, so if these are so poor that government has to support them every month in order for them to survive, then it means that for these persons, when they suffer domestic violence, they are likely to have the cases prosecuted because Evidence from the police and other stakeholders have shown that certain persons, when they are involved in domestic violence and report the same to the police, these persons who are given medical report, uh, sorry, medical forms to take to the hospital, and usually the form has to be endorsed by a doctor after examining the uh, alleged victim, that the evidence is that a lot of these persons are unable to return to the police because they are unable to pay medical doctors to fill in those forms, that to examine them and fill in those forms. So putting these facts together, it moved me that you know, we should take steps, we should implement the law so that at least everybody will have an equal chance of being able to report to the police when there is domestic violence and also of being able to go through the process for these perpetrators to be brought to book. Now Parliament has condemned the takeover of the school feeding program by party agents following the change in government blamed for the suspension of the program in some parts of the country. MP for Ijiras Sechidumase, Braima Mohamed Bawa, told the House provision of food to more than 14,000 pupils in his constituency has been suspended since the beginning of the year over disagreements resulting from the takeover. He says this is negatively affecting attendance and quality of education in the area. Mr. Speaker, since the 12th of January to date, the over 14,000 school pupils have not been fed, resulting in low attendance in public schools. Mr. Speaker, in this era, where successive governments are putting in place pragmatic interventions to promote educational development, development any effort aimed at drilling, drilling such interventions like the school feeding program should be resisted. Mr. Speaker, I would like to crave the indulgence of this House and to appeal to the Minister for Gender, Children and Social Protection, as well as the Minister for Education, to intervene and make sure that the children who are the future of this nation are protected to ensure that their, edu their education is not compromised in the interests of this dear country of ours. Mr. Speaker, the earlier the feeding program is resumed, the better for educational delivery in the constituency because a visit to the affected schools have shown low attendance at the schools and truancy in the constituency. I'm therefore using this opportunity to call on all to call on the government and all stakeholders, including the Select Committee on Education, to as a matter of agency, look into the matter to get the address of the Domestic Municipal Assembly to resume the operations of the program in the Ijra Seke Dumasi Municipality. This You're still watching Joy News Prime. Still to come in the bulletin, a new commemorative five Ghana CD note gets cold reception in Kumasi. 
after the break. You're welcome back. Now, the Bono Ahafo Regional Minister, Kweku Asumatreme, has expressed concern over a recent threat by some unknown people to attack non-indigenous working at Banda Ahinkro. Kweku Asumatreme visited the Banda district capital to assess the situation following media reports public servants such as teachers and health workers are parking out of the town for fear they may be attacked. Nesta Kafuya Juma was part of the team that went to Bandahinkro and reports the indigents are unhappy about the current situation. An anonymous notice threatening to eject all strangers working at Banda Ahinkro has been circulating in the media for some days now. According to the notice, strangers have taken over Banda Ahinkro, depriving the natives of work. The notice further stated that if the strangers do not vacate the district capital, their security could not be guaranteed. The Bono Ahafo Regional Minister was in Banda Ahinkro based on a report presented to him by the Banda District Security Council. Kweku Asumatrami says he is content with the current peaceful environment in Banda Ahinkro and advised the faceless group to stop creating panic in the society. <laughs> It's clear that those who circulated the notice are not brave. Otherwise, they would have put their names on the notice. Workers have become scared because of that possibility of something happening. <laughs> I'm sure you also are worried about the negative impact of this in your community. The Regional Security Council and the Peace Council have had sleepless nights over the issue. Paramount Chief of Banda, Okotredom Kwejo Situ, said, Banda people are peace-loving and therefore are not happy with the current state of panic in the town. He stated that the Banda Traditional Council would do everything possible to expose the people behind the threat. <laughs> We Banda people don't even like to fight amongst ourselves. My elders and I are very worried about this, and we are ready to do everything in our power to find those responsible. Unless the culprits surrender and apologize. The regional minister and his entourage later visited Banda Health Center, where only one ward assistant, one laboratory technician, and a laborer were at post, whilst the rest of the workers have already vacated their post. A letter was brought to the health facility stating that all non-indigents should leave because they have taken over all the jobs. But this is not true. You will not be employed if you are not qualified. So the workers left for their own safety because of the threats. Now, police in Nkoko and officials of the judicial service have destroyed large quantities of Indian hemp seized from homes at Apesika in the Kweru West Municipal Area. The Nkoko Divisional Command seized 204 bags of the banned substance from 21 homes. This is the biggest narcotic haul in several years. Divisional Crime Officer DSP Felix Asari has been speaking to Insurer FM's uh, Heming Teria, who witnessed the destruction. The information was that the community, that the Pesica community, uh, is uh, in the 
uh, uh, cultivation and trading in narcotics. But according to information, the whole community, virtually every single house of the community were into the farming and uh, uh, selling of the narcotics. We sent our men on the ground and it was confirmed. So we decided to strike. So the divisional commander set up a team led by the uh, former crime officer here and they did the operation. It was very, very successful. About 21 house, taxed house. And in every single room of these houses, we were able to collect some quantity or bags of uh, uh, narcotics. We, it was a situation which we have not encountered for quite some time now, that the whole community, every single house of the community were, 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 were dealing in narcotics, and every single home had quantity of narcotic bags in, the, in their rooms. See, it's a huge challenge. It's a huge challenge, and that's why for, I would say, almost every fortnight, we do a lot of soups. We conduct soups, we try to uh, dis destabilize or disorganize uh, these people who are in the jurisdiction uh, trading in narcotics. Now, authorities at the Konfanochi Teaching Hospital are optimistic an abandoned mother and child unit block whose construction has stalled for more than 40 years could soon be completed. Join his documentary, Next to Die, highlighted the plight of pregnant women and their newborn babies. Now, Chief Executive Joseph Apalu says some organizations, including financial institutions and individuals, have expressed interest to help complete uh, the project to prevent neonatal deaths at the facility. Ohim Interior has more in the following report. The Konfanochi Teaching Hospital has introduced a program to provide specialist support and training to some health facilities in Ashanti, Eastern, Central and Western regions. This is to help reduce maternal mortality at the hospital. 22 health facilities have benefited from this special program. Though the year under review saw a reduction in maternal mortality, a joint news documentary by Seth Kwame Boatin revealed four babies die daily at CART. But there's a new dawn of hope. Dr. Apalu told an end-of-year review meeting doctors are prepared to work harder to improve the situation. When you heard news documentary, this thing was done with multimedia that we are prepared to reduce the mortality and child mortality down. We do that in different forms. We have been sending our specialists to the district hospitals beyond, as I said, Brong and Hafo, Preston, and then even beyond the borders of that. So that alone, we have been teaching, they have been teaching doctors who are there what to do when there is a, a diagnosis of preeclampsia, eclampsia, and all, how to refer it. During the referral, what they should do in order before they arrive at the hospital, how they should call. And that has been helping us a lot. We thank the Lord Almighty first for bringing joy people to played with individual organizations, individuals who want to help, to help the government so that this building can be completed as early as possible. The efforts of the doctors would be complemented by the completion of an old maternity and children's block to offer the needed clinical interventions. Can Dr. Apalu is, however, optimistic possible. of a solution inside, thanks to Joy News Exposé, on the plight of pregnant mothers and their babies. I'm convinced, the government is convinced that they will do it, but we want to f hasten or fasten it so that at least what will go there from the government can be reduced and the government will, will be happy. And we shall all be happy because when we come there is a space infection, doctors will feel free, it will motivate them to, do, to work harder but I can assure you that individuals, organizations are calling how they can help. And with this, we are going to sit, sit down with the minister, which way? Because 
so far as we are here, we are not on ourselves. We are under the Ministry of Health, and we have a minister in charge of that. And then he will tell us which way we should go. We are all helping each other. The minister has lauded it to finish it for us, a thanks to him and to the government. Well, Minister of Health Kwekwe Jimamini says despite existing interventions uh, to fix hearing impairment among some Ghanaians, millions still live with the condition. He said this at the launch of a project for planting and distributing 100 ear aid apparel to some needy Ghanaians in Accra. Serena Amandi's report is read to you. The program was organized by the Beru Freedom Lion Club in collaboration with all lion clubs in Ghana and is meant to provide support to 100 Ghanaians with hearing impairment. Minister for Health, Kwekwa Jiman Menu, who lauded the project, said government supports the initiative and will work further to provide support to people with hearing impairment in the country. Prevention pays and we will provide support to preventive measures that minimize the burden of hearing effect and invest in effective interventions. Speaking on behalf of the Lebanese community, Lebanese Ambassador to Ghana, Ali Halabi, reiterated the Republic of Lebanon's commitment to supporting Ghana in diverse ways. This is not the first event when the Lebanese community contributes to any social or humanitarian action in Ghana. Uh, we have always, uh, we are always uh, uh, participating uh, mainly in the educational program where the Lebanese community in Ghana is uh, sponsoring 100 Ghanaian students, uh, talented but needy students in different tertiary uh, institutions in the country. President of the Beru Freedom Lions Club, Raja Jabur, explains his club's motivation for initiating the project. We as Lions Club in Beirut, uh, Lebanon, we tried this year to start with the Air Aid project. And during this, we found a lot of people in Lebanon that they need the Air Aid appareil. And after that, I came to Ghana. And I am a Lions in Lebanon, and I know the Lions in Ghana. Uh, I asked them if they are ready to go in this project together. And they were, they were happy to go with, together because this year Air Apparel is cost about 3,700 US dollars. It's too much expensive. And we as Lion Beirut Freedom, we sponsored it by 85%. And the 15% we got sponsored by the Lebanese uh, community and the Lebanese companies in Ghana. Some of the beneficiaries had their Air Aid apparels planted. is Joy News Prime.